Swiftly back, boys. Nice to see you again. Back, back. Here we are. Uh, to talk about who's going to be the tune's first star signing. We've been used to a lot of shake over the years. A lot of old guys. A lot of cushions. A lot of freeze. A lot of <coughs> guys who were good and then quickly went to better things. You think of Dan Mabar and that. So, how about look it? Jordy Rick. Not the hammer. Who's going to be Prince Bin Salman's first star signing? All goes ahead, obviously. Um, hey, the first bit I would sign I don't think he'd cost well, he probably wouldn't cost as much as other players he'd still be kind of expensive I think he'd build the team around Jack Grealish yes baby I think he, wants to, he wants to move to a bigger club coming in with all this money but like when Man City took over other clubs are coming to money like Chelsea I think you build the team around like a Jack Grealish like mm-hmm. perfect sign for me first one he is linked with obviously Man United Tottenham and that as well so yeah. Dragon would still yeah. get a money talks maybe over potential I think it's football it's different when you have all that money. Like when Man City got it, players, players just come. You know what I mean? Like it's we're up north and people say that's an issue. I don't think it's going to be an issue when it comes to if it's money, money tax no. at the end of the day. Um, Grealish for me, one hundred percent. I think you need to set a precedent of building around. I, I like an English foundation, <clears throat> like I do. I think that works well. I think he wants that step up in class, which it would be coming to that money, getting better players around him. You could really build the team around him for the next five to seven years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect for me. He's obviously yeah. before all this kicked off with, with Corona, he was linked to getting the England team money for the Euros. Yeah. So he's surely going to be an England international soon. And it <clears> does <throat> make sense. The only thing that worries me is being linked with the likes of Man United, where I know they kind of even off a Champions League at the minute, but still Europa League better than better than now in Newcastle. But you would come to Newcastle and be the main man, I suppose. That's the thing. I, I think, think we like, still like Jack Grealish because they were going to like link up the midfield and the attack. Like we, we're missing that that middle middle ground up where like the the attack and the midfield is so far spread out. MFC. It's weird mm-hmm. looking at that now though because I think when you come in with that money, they're not just going to buy one or two players. They're going to buy a new team over the course of three seasons. Mm-hmm. So you start with Grealish, build around. So you know, buy players. You bring in quality, other quality, just make him better. So I think he's he's the one that I would go with a hundred percent. First of all. And then I think obviously you you need a striker because I can't put it with Joe Linton anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like you get really should get a decent striker. Imagine if we have a striker that scores fifteen goals a season. Yeah, that. Uh, <clears throat> in honestly, uh, be insane. But um, I think really should obviously Chris Chant. I think uh, Saint Maximum now. Like for them two, I'd, I'd keep those two. To be fair. Um, mm. I think for Grealish, he's that good of a player. They would feed off him and all. Like he's actually plays he plays the ball forward. <laughs> I mean, like they can make runs and actually love a ball. That's going to guard them. So I think that would be perfect. I think Grealish, and I think you need to look at a striker defensively. I think we'd go for a while with defenses. Well, well, yeah, really right. apart from maybe right back, and then we'll get Willems back instead of at left back. But I think we need to strengthen right back. With centre backs, we're blessed. Keep our mm. he's the best out of the top. Without yeah. the top four, probably even he's in the top four. We fair to Brathka, but I defensively would cover. Would definitely the first place for me is like we see someone to link up play and then someone to put the yeah. ball in the bat in it. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But um, I know we're going to get onto it in a bit. We're going to talk about like Man City, like when yeah. they first got taken over, like, and how we've been linked. Like saying, oh, we might be like the next Man City, and I know we're going to talk about how they built their team up. Like we didn't become winners overnight it took them a few years like and it was like three maybe four years before they won a trophy just gradually building players up that were Premier League quality just just gradually year by year develop them so like that's what I've been saying over the last couple of weeks I don't think we're going to go out and spend loads of money on loads of world class superstars I think we just need to do what Man City did and just gradually build so we can see progression but I think maybe like Man City kind of set the foundation because I don't think anyone really knew how that was going to go. Like, they could have fell flat on the tits. But I think because they've seen how well Man City did and now our new owners are like three, four, five times more valuable than what they are. I think they might look at that and think, well, if they're going to be the new Man City, I want to get in now. I want to slice the cake. I want to be part of that history. So I think maybe, like, I know, like, um, Arsenal and Top, uh, Arsenal, Tottenham, Man United, teams like that can probably offer more currently than what we can in terms of trophies and European football. But people might look, at, well, A, the money, 
the money talks. Like if you're going to offer someone a fucking stupid contract, that's going to entice them. But also to think that in a year, two years, three years, I could be winning trophies. That might be enough to entice more players than what we think we could yeah. get. You start winning, I start getting to Europe. People then want to come for that. But I, I think obviously attack with first signing, Jack Grealish, for me, mm-hmm. he's the one. I think probably most important signings as a club is stuff that we didn't really see, but you need to get a good scout in, a good scouting network. That's going to be, that's your foundation. Alan you, Cosman, you I'm right here as a boy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? That, that is literally going to be a massive part of it, finding the right players to bring to the club, because you don't want to be doing, I think, a QPR, getting everybody in that you think, sorry, giving them hundreds of grands, and then it just, they'll soon get sick of losing money. So they need, they need to obviously build it right. I think that starts with the scouting network, 100%. Um, <clears throat> then obviously go from there really because uh, let's face it there's going to be loads of players probably coming in that you've only really heard of on Football Manager or FIFA and if you haven't heard of them you'll go on Football Manager or FIFA to have it's a look uh, at them, you know? it is hard to get the balance right because you say you can entice players with big wages I mean Rubino yeah. definitely didn't know that there was another club in Manchester he, he, when he went to Manchester <laughs> he thought you'd seen a B&A he didn't even <laughs> yeah. blue. What, what's that blue kit over there I've never seen that yeah. like, where's the, the red, blue red? but uh do you know what I mean? It, it, it's hard because Rubino, like the Man City guy, was saying from Fan TV, Andy was saying like some games amazing, and that ten games he was not in, uninterested, didn't want to know. And that's the level oh, where you find it, you, players who are coming to do well or players who are coming for the paycheck and don't care about you at all. You need your Vincent companies of the world and stuff. But um, with yeah. Rubino, though, I think you might be wrong there, aren't you? I think he was a big fan of Sean Gorda, to be honest with you. He was a big <laughs> fan of Sean Gorda. I'm a big fan of Sean Gorda. Yeah. Feed the goat and he will score at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Rubinho was too big. He was too good to stoop for Man City. Like, he was like a one-man team. That's why we don't him. really want to go out and just splash all our money on like an Mbappe and have him surrounded by a bunch of average players. Like, you need to like build the team. Like, you need to build a team around it, like a good player. So, like, Rubinho was... Too good, too quick. He was in a team with Steven Island and Michael Johnson. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, like, I imagine that's looking at two crossing in and Bappy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you know what I mean. Like, you need a team like one man's not going to win. Win you yeah. anything? Like, have you just yeah. seen the fucking Bulls documentary? Like, if anyone's seen that, yes. Like Michael Johnson says that. Like, I wouldn't have won shit if it wasn't for Scotty Pippen and Dennis Rodman. Like, you, need you need a, need a fucking Pippen team. No, you, you need a scout network. You need a manager with a philosophy, and that's where. Pochino might work really well. Mm. He's got a philosophy on how he wants to play. He, he'll have a say on certain players if he thinks they can play that way, if he thinks he can develop them. Um, it could work with Benitez because he's got a certain way of playing tactically. It's not necessarily about the playoff. Maybe with Benitez, it's more tactically. Um, so you need that. It all needs to come together. You know what I mean? So it might not happen overnight, but we're going to be. Yeah, I, I, think so. I think Grealish is a. a a top end but still realistic signing still top class still the as well. well if you're looking at a Mark Hughes signing or someone that's really going to like make your eyes open and make the world take notes a new, a new Newcastle United like how they did with Man City with Rubinho and they did Chelsea did with well with everyone really they had Robin, they had Robin they had Didier Dogba the list was on my signing yeah, Dogba, you know, Matt and Ailey, someone knew every day weren't they so who do you reckon the best Porto team <laughs> who, you, who won the Champions League last year? We'll have every single one of them. If you, <laughs> if you, if you look at like who Newcastle would sign, you, you look at like Coutinho has been linked, uh, Willian has been linked, Gareth Bale, Antoine Griezmann. Do you reckon any of those could actually be a realistic world class mark you saying? James Rodriguez, man. I think he's a uh, shot in the okay. dark. I think he's sort of not playing constantly for any club he goes to. I think he's someone that, that could make, if they want to make a mark, he's signing James Rodriguez. Um, I think he Coutinho's the same though aren't they like none of them's really settled like they kind of fell out of favour with their teams like they're bouncing around on loan like between like really? Coutinho yeah. and James Rodriguez like that, that kind of outcasts at the minute but still world class so I think like yeah. uh, Cavani as well like, I think Cavani's a bit unsettled at PSG so I think any of them three Bale as well who's for the last few years been seeking to come back to the Premier League I don't think Real Madrid really like him all that much like the fans fucking hate him so like any one of them I think would be great and Imagine if Cavani, Cavani is the number name for Newcastle. That would be sexy. It would. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. We need a fucking striker. Like you can look at all these, like like a uh, Rodriguez and a Coutinho, but they're not out and out strikers. Like we've got people in their position, like uh, uh, Almiron and Samaxman. 
that are good enough. Like, I know they're not that quality, but at least they're yeah, really good. So we need a fucking number nine, like like a Cavani, who's someone who can put the ball in the back of the net. I think St. Maximum are people around him, better players. He yeah. come alive. Like, I, honestly, I, I think Almiron's really good. And I, I think in terms of, I think he'd be perfect squad player, someone to bring off the bench when you've got better yeah. players. But Pace yeah. coming on, St. Maximum with better players around him. My word. Honestly, I just, I, I love that. Honestly, but he's kind of like the Rubinho at the minute, isn't he? Like, he's, he's almost too good for this team. Like, he seems to get frustrated. Like, he tries to do everything and he runs out of energy. He just fucking goes full steam ahead and he's gassed out by like 70 minutes. He's like Conor McGregor. FIFA, in the FIFA and Pro Evo now the crack. He's the best player on both. He's on, <laughs> he's you were getting better. I'm better now. What do you mean? The last game, when you watched Keg Southampton, when he scored the winner, he was finally mm. starting to find a bit of an end product and then obviously yeah. all happened. So, seeing Maximum would be the first one Alongside probably the Brafka for me that would keep his place in this new team of our team. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I think you've got a. I like Lascelles. He gets a lot of stick, but I, I think Lascelles is a good captain. Uh, no, I, I like Lascelles. I don't think he's ever he makes an odd mistake, but I, I think he's quite popular. I think he's, he, he, I don't know, he's got that captain mentality. Now. I don't think he just change a captain. I think, I would say him with the tune for a while. You keep Lascelles, keep St. Maximum. Um, I would keep Shelby in and around you. He wouldn't start like he does now constantly. But again, Shelby with better players around him. Yeah. Like, he'll you'll have more time on the ball and stuff as well. Like, I just... I, 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 he had uh, Vidal next to him just snapping everyone who tries to get near him. He'd be able to get out of him. I'll make No, it's... It's um, like another, like, a different, like, sport and reference that I just made, like, the, the Bulls reference. Like, to... <laughs> Uh, Shelby's like like a quarterback and he's like a Tom Brady but his receivers are shit like, he's just <laughs> you're just fucking launching it for fucking no reason just hoping someone gets on the end of this like that's what like we've got no one up top like my strikers are shit so Shelby's just fucking banging ball so he doesn't even look he just, he just gets the ball without looking he's fucking ah yeah yeah and fucking someone get on the end of that corner flag <laughs> <laughs> no there's a there's a player in um, Syria who's unreal and all he's really young he's a bit like a, a young fellow Tonali I don't know if you've seen him um He's been getting talked about a little bit for going to other clubs. Um, you get a chance to watch his highlights. Like, he looks really good. I could see us signing him. Uh, obviously, somebody with money. I think he's going to be tremendous. So, uh, that would be... like with a couple of AC Milan players. Yeah. No, it's... Um, Fabio Barini, of everyone the day. Fabio Barini. Oh, that's horrible. Is that is <laughs> horrible. Squash that one fucking wrecked you in there. I'd, I'd, rather work with with Joel, I'd rather work with Joel in on than sign fucking Fabio Barini. He's like. the kind of player that you could put him in League One and he wouldn't stand out. But he somehow, fashioned, I somehow fashioned a career, and it, it makes <laughs> no sense. Like he's awful. So I've got a. Yeah, it, was, it was Liverpool, wasn't it? it was Liverpool brought him to the Premier League, wasn't it? Liverpool uh, I, have a front three of Ricky Lambert, Barini, and Balotelli, man. Because <laughs> Rodgers, Rodgers had him on loan at Swansea from was he at Chelsea originally, Barini? Uh, uh, but he had him on loan from Swansea, for Swansea, and he was out in the Championship then. But he's awful. So this team, this team here, that uh, match of the day put out here, BBC Sport, that had Barini and Cavani up front. Uh, they had Coutinho behind him. They had Feke from Lyon, who have been heavily linked with, to be fair. Vidal and Van der Beek, who for me, Newcastle, have got to sign Donny Van der Beek, haven't they? Van der Beek on the back of the black and white shirt goes perfect. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the beak. And then you've got Koulibaly in the centre with uh, Lascelles. Koulibaly's been linked with everyone. To be fair, yeah, I have a new one European football. And then they've still got Yedlin and Rose as the fullbacks, who? which is kind of a bit bizarre, considering yeah. Yedlin's said himself that he wants to leave. That's left Who, whoever's done that um, article was clearly just having a laugh to see how much they could get away with in lockdown, putting Barini up front. Yeah, I'll just put Barini up front, <laughs> nah. see what happens. <laughs> we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have Barini now, never mind after a £300 million deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would read it all that, actually. BBC what, what? Sport, match of the day. Really? Yeah, imagine that kind of shit from the sun. Oh, yeah, nah. The sun have shared with 10 different teams. Left and reporting. But what, what we'll look at, Reid, is Man City and how they did it. So Man City started off signing mid-table star players that were ready for the top. So they had Gareth Barry and Julian Lescott. They started off with, Gary, to be fair, Craig Bellingham and Nigel De Jong as well. Two very good signings, I thought. Yeah, De Jong's a good signing. Um, and then they went on to get... Wayne Bridge, so they're saying they fringe players who are at elite clubs. Um, and then players who are jumping ship from, from sinking ships from other clubs, 
Adebayo and Cody Touri. How good was Adebayo for Man City, man? Yeah. So you look at that. Shea Given as well now, isn't he? Yeah, I had Shea Given as well. Like, they were smart, to be fair, City in the signings. Yeah. I thought they were very, very clever how they did it, yeah. Like, they just, let's say, look, what we kind of need to do, like, they brought in players that you know are good in the Premier League, like, given Bellamy, uh, Gareth Barry, people like that, Julian Lescott, I rated massively back then, he was a great signer. Mm. Like, like, players like that, like, they're good enough to just come in out of Bayo from Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Like, the players that's been in the Premier League that know how, how, it, it, how it is, like, when we brought in Julian, and that was a fucking massive risk, spending a lot of money on a young kid from a, a German league, Brazilian player from the German league. Uh, like them kind of players Man City brought in were great they didn't break the bank they weren't overly expensive but they were good enough to just lift them up the league get them to where they needed to be break into the top four and then push on win some FA Cups get them in the Champions League and f- finally start competing in the Premier League like winning it and stuff yeah. like, that's, that's well, what I feel like we need to do like, we need to just bring people in that are good enough not splash out all our money in one yeah. go on the best yeah. players in the world yeah. I think that's yeah. the you can nick like Nathan Redmond from Southampton and stuff like that, like players that have people points to prove, you know what I mean? And, yeah, and yeah, by all might be someone like a, like a Giroud from Chelsea, kind of get a game there, mm. sitting on the bench there, like a Giroud from Chelsea, or even even like a Wilson from Bournemouth, Ings from Southampton, players who have been there, done it, scored 10 plus goals this season. Ings has like, a cracking season. He has, like, yeah. Yeah. Ings, honestly, he's like injury-free, banging mm. them, you get you realise why Liverpool bought him. Mm. Like, mm-hmm. Really good season. Um, no, I think we definitely need to do stuff like that. Probably you mentioned like McGrealish, um, Grealish from Aston Villa. You've got like McGinn uh, from Villa uh, alongside yeah. him, Ryan Fraser from Bournemouth, exciting winger. Mm-hmm. Nathan Aki, yeah. Nathan Aki from Bournemouth. Uh, Tech Nathan Aki in a heartbeat, man. I think he's unreal. Yeah, Aki, Aki, yeah, Aki would be great. I've seen a link that would be linked with um, uh, Dwight McNeil from Burnley. Like, you know, I'm a fan of him, I fucking hate Burnley. But I love Dwight McNeil, I think. Not a fan of Dwight McNeil. I think he's a good... He'd be a good score rotation. He doesn't get us really excited, but he plays perfectly for them. I don't know. I wonder what he'd be like in like another team. Like, yeah, like, maybe, maybe for us, he wouldn't really fit in with, with like, like our formation. Because like, he's more like a proper old-school, traditional left winger, isn't he? Like, he just, I, don't, I don't really know how he would fare playing like, either like, as a wing-back or like, further up the field like in the like, front three. Yeah. But... So so he's, he's, I, he's there, I definitely have another competition. Get get rid of what yeah. do and have McNeil on the bench ready to come on for St. Maximus. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Man. I don't think you'd break the bank that much either. I don't think Burnley would put up too much of a fight about them. Well, one of the good things is that Newcastle are going to be one of the only clubs that can actually compete financially and, and splash the cash if you like once this takeover goes through because it's been it's been rumored that a lot of clubs will be looking at loan signings and free agents and that because no one knows what the crack's going to be when the season's going to end mm-hmm. when the next one's going to start the transfer window and stuff like the financial hit on clubs is huge especially below the Premier League. Red mm-hmm. Celtic, you know what I mean? Red Celtic, get that Edward. I, I, would, get, I would get him. He's been at what Arsenal to do that Edward. I'd, I'd have him in a hobby. He'd be good. He's really good. I don't know how much Dembele would cost now that he's went to France. You know what I mean? Some mm-hmm. might be cheaper option than signing is someone else. Like, there's players like that. They're, they're obviously they'll be smart about it. I can't say them just blasting three hundred million on players and stuff. So. Yeah. Mm. It's exciting. Another like thing that. that we need to another thing that we need to kind of be careful on is like you know like when teams like come up from the championship and they're just totally trying to rebuild. Like they'll change their entire starting eleven. Full on. Like players, like players that don't know each other, like find it hard to gel. Like it'll, it takes time to bring in too many new people at once. So like that could be like a problem that we need to be careful on. Like we don't want to bang the team in with too many new players and find it hard to have that camaraderie particularly with a new manager and stuff you know? like a new manager can fuck up the uh, formation that we've got now among our players like Esther Maximin yeah. Almiron's Lascelles players like that so with a new manager and 10-11 new signings like that might not be as good as it sounds initially like I think it'll take time to work on some cohesion you have so to get exciting to- you have to get rid of a lot of dead with the don't you? You look at oh, the massive team, team yeah. bloody hell. I mean, I mentioned Atsu. You can that for years, not just now. <laughs> like fucking years. Yeah, yeah, this has been lingering for too long. How long have we been trying to get rid of even Dwight Gale for? Do you know what I mean? We're kind of, we're kind of <laughs> shift the cunt. <laughs> crazy one, absolutely crazy. No, I think I like, think you will see a lot of silence, but it's just got to be the right ones. Uh, yeah. Like you can even say like an Aaron Moy get Aaron Moy get bought. He won't break the bank, mm-hmm. but he's better than some of the options we have. You know what I mean, but mm-hmm. sentiment's weird because you've got Sean and Matty who might not start every week on a new ownership, but they have the chance to go forward. So you might not need too many centre mids. 
I don't know, it's weird. I think you really need a top, a two top quality strikers. That's where, that's, where I'm, that's where I would start. Two really yeah. top quality strikers. Maybe a Dembele from abroad. Then maybe an Ings or someone who's been there and done it in the Premier League. Yeah, or Chris Wood or something who has something different for. I mean, like, mm. It's weird. But it's really exciting. Like, that's, that's the best thing about this. Like, Looking forward to next season. Brian obviously the takeover goes over. I think it will. It's mm. so exciting. Like, no like, idea what's going to happen. I'm like to get like Newcastle shirts with different names on for the full team. Uh, like most seasons, you can kind of predict like one or two is going to go, one or two is going to come. Probably have the same manager. Like it's not really going to be too much different. But now, like anything can happen. Like we've got a list of potentially fifty new players. Like who's going to come, who's going to go, who the manager is going to be. We've got no idea, and it's so exciting. Yeah, I can't fucking wait to like find out. Like how long has it been for us to be? I, like I haven't been this excited. Even in, in the Bobby Robson era and stuff, people were getting bored. Like, we never had this much money. Like, when Mike Lone come, we were all delighted because it was a lot of money, but we're just mm. thinking, this is like an empty checkbook here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, anyone's it's it's like cheating on football manager. And it's class. It feels <laughs> amazing. I nah, cannot wait. <laughs> it is hard to judge. Like, even when the takeover announced, it wasn't even the fact of just buying anyone and trying to win the league or whatever. It was just like, finally, we can get rid of Ashley, man. Finally, we can not explain where we're oh. merchandise from and Gan and fucking name one have a paint without getting ridiculed and hoping to not just be mm-hmm. fighting relegation. Part of the problem. Part of the problem <laughs> with that, eh? When you're doing that punk wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't be drinking them two for a five hour beers that our guys in Mike Ashley's pocket, you know. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, how good is it going to be not to, just to get rid of that toxicity out of the football club and then mm-hmm. hopefully... I, I, I'd take top eight, mate, like, just to push for Europa League. What I would do for Kazakhstan away on a Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're really yeah, like, that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, we, need to, we need to progress. Like, a lot of fans, like, even like, other fans around the country are, are tipping with the win like, the Premier League. Like, next season, like, it's going to be like, instant. Like, as fans, we just want to see progression. Like, we want to see these like, like, pre- kind of Premier League rejects, if you will, like, that are going to come in and boost it up just to see progression just from something different than what we've put up with for the last 10, 15 years. Like, like top eight, it's brilliant. Offer me eighth now in a FA Cup semi-final. I'll be fucking out of the moon. It's progression. It's something. It's getting with somewhere and it's getting we're excited for what more could come. And I, I, I think that'd be fucking great. That's the thing. Instead of thinking the weekend's going to be a proper downer, every weekend you're going to be as excited as you possibly can be as a football <laughs> fan. Maybe like, Oh, it's just gonna be so much fun. Like, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like you, you enjoy sport because it's like a way of life. But we're, we've got so much hope, so much optimism now. It's gonna be everybody on the town in the tune. It's just gonna be proper upbeat, happy. Instead of going there, everybody's like, "Oh, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of Ashley." Because it's proper negative. Like, it's kind of mm-hmm. it's horrible going sometimes because it's just so negative and it's not really a fun experience. And even if you win, you think, "I still want to get rid of that toss pot." Like mm-hmm. we're new, we're just gonna be going. Dressed up in fancy dress, Kazakhstan away in borrowed outfits. It's going to be class, man. Mm-hmm. We'll get Cavani, we'll have Cavani wigs. John Flanagan, get him <laughs> in, we'll have Flanagan days. But other than that, it'll be something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Flanagan days. That's not a point I was going to make before, like, about like, just like the gradual progression, like getting top eight or whatever. Like, like Man United and Arsenal fans at the minute have been like, they're saying like they'd rather finish outside the top six so they don't have to compete in the Europa League. And I think that's a fucking shit attitude. Like, yeah. at least they're still in Europe. Like, there's teams like Newcastle, teams below us, like, yeah. that have been banging on the door, dreaming of European nights. Like, like say, give me back your away on a Thursday night. Fucking knee yeah. Like, just to, just to play, like, European football it doesn't have to be Champions League in the yeah. first year or two. Like, as long as we're gradually getting up there, competing in the Europa League, mint. I don't give a fuck who we're playing. Like, it's just if to, for that, us no. to be there is mint. And for teams like Arsenal and Man United to, like, kind of, Look down on that like it's like it's a relegation, like it's like the championship version of the Champions League. Like, I think that's fucking shit. Like, to be grateful for where you are. At least you haven't gone down to where we are because we yeah, used to have matches. Champions League football. We used to play in the Champions League and compete for the Premier League and the FA Cup and stuff. So, like, we'd snap someone's fucking knob off for a, a Europa League place. You know what I mean? Like, and they're like, nah, I'd, I'd rather finish outside the top six than play that. Like, I think that's fucking shit. We're looking at it, mate. Mm. We want to be as many competitions as possible, man. Part of the fun yeah. of being a fan, you've got a chance to win something else. You've been mm. in the Europa League now, and all, like, getting Champions League, like that's a massive incentive for any club. Yeah. Like, top four in the Premiership isn't easy now. Even top four in yeah. the Spanish League isn't easy. Like, 
there's more money coming into the game, so it is creating a bit of a divide. But like, yeah, it's all coming. Let's do nearly living the dream. Oh, <laughs> so exciting, man! man proper, uh, just can't, can't wait for lockdown to be on. So we'll get next season. And to be fair, next summer we'll have the Euros. That'd be classic. Unbelievable. Let's see. I get the coffee, so. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, that's who we get. Oh, this is our lot. We need to get on a massive piss off. We do, like, we can use that train pass, can't you? York, can't Durham, can't Alawa. Yeah, fucking bless it. Absolutely <laughs> mental, man. Honestly, like, have it Euros next year. I'm kind of excited for. Like, I was obviously big, good. It's not happening this year. That could work out in our mm. favour so much if we have a fit Harry Kane. Nice. Obviously, nice. relation that develops a bit more. We this could really have worked out well for us mm. for England. We, we could be winning that Euros, like. Unreal. Before Newcastle win the Premiership, England win the Euro. <laughs> Imagine, man. <laughs> That'll be the greatest year ever. Well, it's stayed so, in Wembley because Newcastle will be in the FA Cup final next next May for, Wem- for Wembley and then we'll just start stay there for the Euros for the opening game, you know what I mean? Just live in London next year. Get us a little penthouse flat. <laughs> Paid by the shake. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> right, nice one, lads. That'll do. Sweet, am I going to put the kids to bed? <laughs> five o'clock. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking about that already. Yeah. This corny shit got your day yeah, at man. Four, five o'clock. Ah, fuck, get to bed, man. <laughs> I've got like, I've got like blue toenails and that. The kids are just painting us, flaming so we could decorate in the kitchen. My last is decorating, so I'm just letting the kids paint us all over so I can uh, get the decorating done. So it's proper sound, like I proper sound. Nah, that sounds like you're doing a good job, Courtney. Then me and Joseph. Ah, I mean, I probably athlete, you know. Hey, so lads, see you again soon. Uh, I see you soon, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah.